but here we go with the recurve men's bronze medal match. Should be a good one. Great Britain taking on Italy as we get set for the guys to take center stage. And there's Larry Godfrey, who we'll see later on in the men's gold medal match, leading out the team from Great Britain. Simon Terry, Alan Mills following him out. And of course, the team from Italy following them out as well. Should be a good one as we get set for the bronze medal match. Of course, Great Britain will be shooting at target number one on the left, and the Italians on target number two. And we'll introduce you to our cast of characters who will be out there today representing these two great countries. From left to right, you have Mr. Mills in uh, the Wills. center. Wills, excuse me. And in the center is Simon Terry. And on the right is Larry Godfrey. And these three have already qualified for the Olympics, and they'll be competing in about a month back home in London at Lord Cricket's, which I understand uh, has been sold out already. 63,000 tickets have already sold. That's what I've heard, but uh, tickets have gone on sale again, so they may, they may be, they made more room. But here we have Team Italy, who's got a very, very strong team. Michelle Frangilli, Marco Galeazzo, and Moro Nespoli. The Italians defeating Russia, then beating Mexico in the quarterfinals before dropping a two-point decision to India in the semifinals. Great Britain was 10 better than Germany, eight better than Australia in the quarterfinals, and wound up losing to the United States in the semifinals by eight points. So that is the path both of these teams have taken to get to this bronze medal match in Ogden, Utah, stage three of the Archery World Cup. So Simon Terry, one of the veterans on the Great British team, starting off the yeah, nice six, side. round with a 10. 38 years old, when he was 18 years old, won two bronze medals at the Olympic Games, then went on about a 10-year hiatus, but has come back and come back strong. Yeah, he definitely has, and he's definitely one person to watch out for on the field of play. Alan Wills now, the youngest of this trio, 31 years old. <laughs> and he's a very proficient field shooter, and that's done inside the forest. It's not on a big open field like what we have here. And Larry Godfrey, who was fourth at the Athens Games in 2004. Nice shot, Lar. Great shooting by Great Britain to get started. Good, fellas. Nice 10, 9, and 9, 28 points on the first three shots. When you look at the combined age of these three archers, it's almost a century's worth of experience. In fact, I think it's over a century. Maro Nespoli, the European record holder, shooting the highest bow weight on the field for the recurve archers. I believe it's about 57 or 58 pounds. And I mean, some people were confused and wondering if he really meant 48, if there was a language barrier. And he says, no, 58. <laughs> and then you have to ask him to write it down on a piece of paper just to really verify. And he writes a five and an eight. And the average weight of a recurve man's bow is at 50 pounds. So when you imagine how much faster his arrows are going compared to everybody else's, it should give him an advantage. Does give him the advantage, but he's got to have the strength to do that. Exactly. And that is not to be underestimated as Italy comes out firing strong. Three straight nines, they trail by one. And now we're back to Simon Terry, the former Olympian, who won a team gold medal in Antalya last month with these two mates. Alan Wills was also on that gold medal team over in Turkey. Ten, nice shot, Ten points. Nice shooting, Very strong shooting. I was actually shooting with these men on the practice range this morning. 26 seconds. And uh, I mean, 59, 58, 57 was their average score on each end. So they're really, really strong and they're really getting together as a team. 
Good, Larry. Nice shooting, lads. And 56 points unofficially to start off the first end for Team Great Britain. Here's Nespoli. Two tens will tie from here on in. And we have the 2004 Olympic champion, Marco Galeazzo. A highly decorated archer in a long and decorated career. The Italians are kind of chuckling a little bit. We're all a little more high in the first end, and it looks like none of them have learned from their mistake in the first end, but I think they've learned now. And Julie. Seven points. Can't see it on our screen. And he looks as confused as we are, but there it is, out of three o'clock. You can see him looking back and almost as though he was saying, are you kidding me? Exactly. Sometimes those shots happen where they don't feel like they're, they're the, a shot that you deserve. So you feel like you, when a shot breaks, it should be a 10, but Frangilli looking at it and going, oh, that's not supposed to be there. But There's some intense two. conversation going on right there, Crispin. Yeah, and I'm, I'm sure in that situation, Frangilli has got a little bit of a, you know, a quizzical attitude going, what the heck happened? And both of the other archers are saying, just calm down, do your shot. You know how to shoot tens. Just go out, let's do it from here. And so it'll be interesting to see what happens in the next Even end. At, but yeah, right now, Great Britain no? in the lead sure. by four points unofficially after six arrows. So last thing you want to see in the dark. I'm sure a lot of the fans back home in Great Britain staying up late. Almost 11 o'clock, I believe, in England right now. But staying up to watch Larry Gutfried and Simon Terry and Alan Wills, we're glad to have them with us here on Archery.tv. It's almost 12 o'clock if I'm doing my math right, but uh, I mean, either way, it's really late for them. Is it a seven hour difference from uh, Utah or eight hours? I think it's an eight hour difference. Eight hour difference, then it would Utah. be close to midnight. Yes. Ten well, points a, for Amaro uh, Nespoli. Four-point lead for Great Britain as this end starts, but Nespoli with a great shot to get them started. Now Galeazzo, who won an Olympic silver medal with the men's team in Beijing to go along with that gold medal he won in Athens. Now we see the Italians' arrows are now hitting a little bit lower where they're supposed to be hitting instead of the high nines. A little bit of a long shot, nine points just out left. So a lot better than the seven that he cut earlier today. Possibly six point lead for GBR in the next three shots. Simon Terry. Nice, nice shot, Cy. With a nine. Oh, will he? I wonder what he was saying right after that shot. You, know, you don't usually see archers talk just after the string is let go, but it seems to work for him. Alright. shot again. Plenty of time for Larry Godfrey to make a last second adjustment. Good line. Nine points. And instead of shooting when he wasn't feeling quite comfortable about things, he regrouped, took his time, made sure everything was right, and shoots a nine. And that's a lot more advantageous for you than trying to, you know, uh, take a risky shot and cut one loose that's that's not supposed to go where you oh, want it. And a ten for Nespoli. So to take your time and be able to readjust is a key thing for a team to be able to have its members trust that the team can deal with. Uh, because you'll have one archer who, who's the last archer who's supposed to be able to shoot the fastest under pressure and still come up with results. Another 10 from Italy. Very smooth shooter. Thank you. 
The trio from Italy starting to pick things up. Three tens already in this second end. Ah, but an eight. Eight. So Frangilli going, I don't know what's going on. I don't know why I keep shooting arrows out to the right. But it's definitely not something that he wants to keep doing. He had shot a seven on the final arrow of the first end and now shoots an eight on the final arrow of the second end for Italy. That's an eight for Great Britain from Simon Terry. Which takes a little bit of the sting out of the shot by Frangilli. See what Alan Mills has yeah, in mind. Wills, excuse me. He shoots an X. I mean, 22 seconds. Can't get any better than that. 17. And an eight will maintain the lead. Long. Ten points. Nice shooting, fellas. Steady. Larry Godfrey. Boy, he was rock solid. And he was dialed in. And comes up with a bullseye on the final shot of the second end for Great Britain. And so the men from the UK in good position right now midway through the match. We've shot 12 of the 24 arrows. And after the first 12 arrows, the lead stands at three. Italy able to take one point off the lead after that first end when they fell behind by four. It's 111 to 108 right now. If you're just joining us, along with Chris Pendwainius from Canada, Olympic archer, and I'm glad to be able to say that. Congratulations. Thank you. It's going to be my second Olympics, and I'm really excited to go. You're pumped up, aren't you? Yes, I am. <laughs> You'll be in London shooting in the Olympic Games. Hopefully not commentating. No. We would much <laughs> rather see you out there. No offense. I'm, I would rather be out on the field right now as well. But glad to have Crispin with us here on archery.com. TV and glad to have you with us wherever you are, whether it's morning, afternoon, or evening, or the middle of the night. So a three point advantage for Great Britain. These two teams have met six times head to head. And they have split those six matches with each team winning three times. Eight, Eight points, points from Nespoli. Oh, Ten points from the Olympic champion in 2004. So Galeazzo keeping Italy's hopes alive. Now Frangili, who was ranked 47th in the world, was number one back in 2005 and has been competing for a long time, since 1999, here on the international stage. And he's still out to the right. But in the nine ring. But in the nine ring, so a little bit better than the eight and the seven, but again, probably still moving his sight to the right. Simon Terry with an eight. Out to the right. Again, I think the wind is, might be picking up on the field of play. And it looks like the flags are actually blowing left, which for, uh, for archers, for a right arrow in a left wind could just mean that they're pushing their bow over into the wind. And not some nice words coming out of his mouth on that shot, but In fact, I still went to the nine. I couldn't tell if it was a look of surprise or dismay once he released that arrow. I'm not sure what he was trying to do with that one, but uh, it still went near the middle. So the southpaw, Larry Godfrey with a 10 again. Good shot. Showing his teammates how to do it. It's a great way for him to warm up for his gold medal match coming up later today against Luis Alvarez. Eight Nespoli. points. Now he's off to the left with both of his arrows, so I'm wondering if he wants to make a little bit of a sight change. Galeazzo had a bullseye on his last shot. 
Needs to match that here if he can. Comes up with a nine, though. Good consistency for Marco Galeazzo. And a quick shot, too. He doesn't use up a lot of the time on the clock, so he's... And now Frangili, who won a mixed team bronze medal here in Ogden two years ago. Finished ninth at the games in Sydney in 2000, but he's out there in the eight ring, still in the eight ring, but high into the right. Off to the right, yeah. I'm wondering what's really going on here and why Frangeli is shooting out to the right. And I don't think it might be any equipment problems or anything. It might just be the wind on the field. And another right, eight from Simon Terry. So now the breeze is pushing the arrows to the right. And it's a game of adjustments. It's got to be something going on on the field. These guys are very good shooters, and for them to be shooting out that far is very odd. Yeah, just out again. And a nine just out of the ten ring. 27 seconds, Lark. Lots of time for Larry Godfrey. 23 seconds. Smooth. And with the long jeans clock winding down. Larry Godfrey has held the shot for 10 seconds. Long shot, yes. 10 points. Paid off. He knew Some, what he was doing. Sometimes archers just need to wait for the perfect time. And I mean, sometimes the, you're holding your pin in the middle of the target, the wind blows you over and you go, don't let it go, don't let it go, don't let it go. And then it comes back to the middle and say, okay, this is a, something I can work with. And then get blown over again. And so you hold on to the shot and then you get blown back into the middle. So, I mean, it's, uh, it's sometimes a tough call on when you really want to let that shot go. But obviously he picked the right time and uh, paid off. As with all sports and any discipline, it's much, much more difficult and there's much much more that goes into it. You see somebody swing a golf club and you, okay, you swing in the golf club. Well, there's a lot of technique. Same applies here in this sport. Exactly. Stance, positioning, Even the amount shoulders. of pressure, even the amount of pressure each finger on the string takes is gonna be important for archers at this level. And right now, um, believe it or not, these archers aren't thinking about that. A lot of them are just running in something like a, uh, something akin to autopilot where they just pick up their bow, put the arrow into the bow, put their fingers around the string and shoot the arrow. And so it's, uh, it's something that's kind of automatic that happens to all the archers when they're at this level. But we've gone through all of the training beforehand to make sure that we are gonna be cutting loose all the shots that we mean to shoot. So six more arrows left to go as Great Britain. Last World Cup stage. Will shoot second. Italy trailing, gets to go first. And Mauro Nespoli, just outside the 10 ring. Galeazzo ranked number one in the world back in 2006. Still in the top 25. That's a nine just out of the 10 ring by about a millimeter. They're probably going to be marking it down as nine asterisks. And Julie, nine points again out to the right. So three nines for Team Italy, which came in trailing by five points. Nice. 10 points. That's it. Simon Terry not about to falter, not in this situation. No shot against him before, and he's a very strong, tough competitor. So, I mean, this is just another day at the office for him. This is smooth. Yeah, good, Wilsey. Great shooting. Alan Wills with a nine. Yeah, still there. Shot number 21 of 24 coming up right now from Larry Godfrey. And now Larry Godfrey. So far on the day, Godfrey with three bullseyes. Nice. Nice nice. And there's his fourth. Nice shooting, Larry. Nice shooting. Really good. Larry's really, really on his game today, and I think he's, a, I think he's prepared for the gold medal match later on today. So... Getting comfortable and used to this field is very key. Ooh, quick shot. That's an eight out to the left. Nine. 
nine, nine points. Line. Great group, just wrong spot. Another inch in a different direction, it's a different story. A couple more millimeters and it would be a different story, but still you know, the arrows are shot, they're counted now, and uh, 11 seconds left for Frangilli. That's a six. Uh, six. High right. Don't know what's going on with uh, Frangilli right now. Sort of sums up his day. In his defense, there's been a lot of shooting going on this week. And, I mean... Yeah, nice shooting, Simon. <laughs> nice ax <laughs> from Simon Terry. There's been a lot of shooting going on this week. And, uh, I mean, it is not only physically tiring, but mentally tiring for each archer. So... Frangilli just might be experiencing some of that right now. And a little bit of fatigue. Yeah. Yeah. Good, Which is understandable. These archers have been shooting all week long, starting, I believe, on Monday with uh, the practice Your rounds, shot, practice sessions, and then the competition began. Your shot. And Team Great Britain has already clinched the gold medal, uh, bronze medal, sorry. Yes, and a 10 to finish it off, 58 points in the final end. And the bronze medal going to Team Great Britain. So Larry Godfrey makes it official, and he picks up his first medal of the day. He will win another medal later on today. We're just not sure which color it will be. He's in the gold medal match later today against Luis Alvarez. But that's a great way for him to get to get out here and get a feel for things and get a feel for the wind, the conditions. And Larry Godfrey along with Alan Wills and Simon Terry pick up the bronze medal for Great Britain. Their next stop is London, Lord Crickets. Lord's Cricket, excuse me. And there they pose for the photographs that capture the moment here in Ogden, Utah. So a bronze medal for Great Britain as they cap off a good week, a week in which they were able to defeat Germany, Australia, lost to the United States, but bounced back in the bronze medal match and come up with the victory, 223 to 210, a convincing victory for Great Britain by 13 points over the team from...